Hey everybody, ABC 10 meteorologist Brendan Minchef here. Happy Easter to those of you that celebrate, uh, but it is also Sunday, and so that means time to talk more drought. And yep, we're going to talk a little bit about Tulare today. Uh, but let's start with the map itself. Continues to improve. We saw some minor improvements, ma mainly across far northern California with the latest drought update. But still, 56% of the state not in any drought at all. About 19% of the state in the yellow color, that abnormally dry color. That includes the Sacramento Valley. That is technically not drought. That is recovering from drought. It's still the best the map has looked since February 18th, 2020. The drought score was 70 back then. It is 70 right now as well. Uh, so, again, continuing to improve. And the forecast continues to call for improving drought conditions, especially across the Sacramento Valley as we go through the next few months. So I do expect to see drought lift entirely uh, as we continue to work towards uh, towards and through the month of May. Let's take a look at our precip tracker. We have gotten a little bit of rain downtown Sacramento this month, just over a tenth of an inch, almost two tenths of an inch. Our average, though, is over half an inch, so we are a little bit behind for the month, but we're still way above when it comes to the water year itself. We've seen 25.84 inches since October 1st average through this date is 17 inches, which means we are almost nine inches above where we normally are. We've been taking a look at this graph for the last several weeks. And we're oh so close to surpassing where we were in 2018-19. We're just a few hundredths of an inch away in downtown Sacramento. But I got to tell you, there's no more rain in my forecast over the next 10 days. So it kind of remains to be seen if we'll get there. We're almost there for all intents and purposes. We made it there 25.8 inches in 2018-19, 25.8 inches in 22 to 23. We've essentially made it. We're talking just hundreds of an inch at this point. Uh, can take a look at the state as we usually do, and we can still see lots of areas way above average in terms of rainfall from Southern California and LA and San Diego to far Northern California, including South Lake Tahoe, Redding, and Eureka, and of course, Sacramento, Stockton, and Modesto, and San Francisco, over 12 inches above where they normally are to this point in the water year. All good news, snowpack continues to hang in there, although we are starting to see some warmer temperatures. And so we're going to lose some of that snowpack, especially for this Sunday and this Monday, when we're going to be in those upper 70s, there's going to be some 60s for high temps in the Sierra. But as things stand, as of April 7th, 197% of that April 1st average. But since we're past April 1st, now the interesting one is that average to date. So 203% of the average to date in the northern Sierra, 243% in the central Sierra, and still above 300% in the southern Sierra, 306% of the average to date. And you can see why this is going to be such a concern for areas, especially the Tulare Basin, uh, as we go into those warmer months. Reservoirs in the Sacramento area, uh, we see 108% average to date for Shasta at 87% capacity, Oroville's at 84% capacity above average, and Folsom at 69% capacity, also above average. A little further south, New Maloney's 59% capacity, 95% of average. Don Pedro, 84%, 110% of average, and the San Luis is just to the brim full. 99% capacity and 116% uh, of average to date. Here's another video I want to share with you guys. This is from Christopher Andrew Camp. Send another one in. This one's a Folsom Lake. Christopher, thank you so much for sending these in. Love to see how full all the res reservoirs are. We remember the videos and the pictures from October, November, when we were like, man, we really need a rainy winter, and everything was so dry. Well, we got that rainy winter, and now you can see uh, just how much better everything is looking. This is Folsom Lake. He also gave us a picture, Christopher did, from Party Reservoir, a little bit further south on the McKellemney River. You can see how full that is as well. Lots of luscious green hills all around as well. Good things, uh, all good things that we like to see. Uh, also got a picture up from far northern California. This is Scott Valley from in Siskiyou County, very rural part of the state, far northern part of the state, uh, but obviously very, very beautiful. And you can see just how much water there is. There's some standing water uh, in some of these fields up there. This is from Theodora Johnson uh, with the Scott Valley Agriculture. Uh, so you can see, even in the far northern part of the state, it is improving. Now, she wanted, uh, she emailed to tell me that, and not only send these pictures, but also to tell me that even though they're under that emergency uh, drought declaration still, they're one of the few places in the state that still is, uh, a lot of their water comes from snowpack, and a lot of that snowpack is still intact in far northern California. Uh, so we're not seeing the effects necessarily on the surface yet, as it's still all in terms of snow and not necessarily, even though we saw some standing water there, not necessarily making it to the lakes and the rivers just yet. She did say 
uh, she expects Trinity to really start to come up as the snowpack melts off. So taking a look at Trinity, you can see it has come up since the start of the water year, but uh, it's not risen as much as a place like Shasta is, where Shasta is driven a lot by rainfall. Trinity's driven a lot by the snow melt. And again, we have not had a lot of snow melt yet. So she wanted to say uh, that even though they're still in drought and they still have that emergency declaration, she does expect things to be okie doke uh, by the time we get later on uh, into the summer because of that snow melting and Trinity will fill up. So taking a look at Trinity, average to date 50%, but the capacity is still only 37%. You can see, see there's still a ways to go. But you also notice Trinity on average continues to fill in towards July 1st. Here's July 1st and it's kind of right there at the peak. So that obviously is indicative uh, of that snow melting. And we are, like I said, in for a warm up. Just a brief one for this weekend. Take a look at Sunday. This is today for Easter, 77 in Sacramento. So we're going to be in those middle upper 70s, Fresno, upper 70s, Bakersfield, low 80s. Along the coast, still going to stay cool in the 60s in the Bay Area and in the 50s down near Los Angeles. But you can see the deserts, Death Valley 84, Palm Springs 92, Imperial about 94. And in the far northern part of the state, still going to stay somewhat cool, but climbing into the 70s for some locations. A little bit warmer on this coming Monday. Look at this, Imperial even reaching potentially triple digits. Palm Springs pretty close to it at 98. Death Valley pretty close to it at 92 as well. Still staying relatively cool along the coast, but a plenty of 70s, upper 70s, even low 80s in the northern Sacramento Valley. And then as we looked around towards the San Joaquin Valley and the southern Central Valley, about 87 for high in Fresno on Monday and 90 for high in Bakersfield. So this warmer weather is coming. The more spring-like weather is finally making its presence felt. It is brief. We're going to cool back down for the middle part of this coming week. Uh, but, of course, we're in April now. It's not going to stay cool forever. And we'll be back in the 70s for next weekend as well. Speaking of Sacramento, downtown Sacramento, warmest we've been so far this year, 71 degrees. We did that twice. That was February 12th and February 20th. Uh, yesterday, uh, April 8th, made it to 70 degrees. So we're easily going to be warmer than we have been at any point this year in Sacramento, uh, both Easter Sunday and the day after Easter. In fact, the last time Sacramento uh, was at least 75 degrees was October 30th. And even though 80s aren't in the forecast, the last 80 degree plus day in Sacramento was October 21st when we made it to 84 degrees. It's all part of this high pressure system scooting in, bringing us some warmer temperatures across the state of California. Low pressure is going to dip down, not necessarily going to be a rainmaker, though we could see some showers from Shasta to the north, and especially in the Oregon area, we're going to see uh, some rain. But from Shasta to the north, could see some showers up there. The rest of California does look to stay pretty much dry. There's some chances of rain, but honestly, especially uh, in the valley, it's not looking too good. We're just going to be a little bit cooler. Highs in the 60s. High pressure returns, and we'll be back in the 70s for next weekend. So uh, a little drier right now, a little warmer as well. But as we look out towards the end of April and the start of May, this is the Climate Prediction Center three to four week climate outlook. So this is April 22nd to May 5th. You can see much of the eastern, I'd say almost two thirds of the United States, likely warmer than average. But as we look out to the West Coast, likely cooler than average to end the month of April and start the month of May. Not only cooler, but also leaning wetter right now. So this is just indicating that there's still some signs out there that that blocking high pressure is not necessarily gonna build in and stay put, allowing the door to remain open for some potential rainmakers to come through the West Coast. I think it's relatively safe to say we're not gonna see any high-end atmospheric river events at this point in the year, but uh, we could see some passing storms, potentially two or three of them uh, by the end of the month and in towards the start of May. And that could, you know, even if we only have some showers a few days, that would be enough to kind of keep us leaning a little wetter than average. So we're maybe not done yet. So let's stay tuned on if the rainy season is over. But it's definitely by uh, by all signs pointing towards a kind of winding down of the rainy season. And uh, this is Honestly, at this point, kind of good news. I think we're pretty much good on precipitation in the state of California this year with a record and honestly just epic snowpack up in the Sierra and then all the rain that we've had down in the Valley and in Southern California. Too much more would not necessarily be a good thing, especially considering how full our reservoirs are. But also as that snow starts to melt, right, we don't want to see a big rain on snow event because that is going to be, it could potentially be disastrous in the amount of runoff that we would see coming from the Sierra and especially down in the Southern Sierra. 
and that takes us to Tulare County. And old Lake Tulare, which was drained back in the early 1900s to kind of make way for agriculture, it's filled up uh, a handful of times, not necessarily filled all the way up, but it, there's been water in the old Tulare Lake Basin a handful of times since then. And definitely this winter is one of those times where we're seeing that lake fill up again. It is causing some flooding concerns uh, down there. It's uh, slowly kind of evolving, right, as we start to warm up how much water's down there. The good news is they've got a bit of a break where it wasn't raining, it wasn't snowing, uh, and they were able to kind of let some water out of the reservoirs and give people a chance to kind of build up the levees again and put some sandbags down if we need them or if they need them. We talked to somebody from the Tulare County Farm Bureau. Uh, uh, I mean, who better to talk to, right? Knows about agriculture, lives there. Here's what he had to say, and it was a very interesting conversation. When those rivers really started roaring, we had a, some of the uncontrolled creeks that lost levees and uh, went in different directions than they ever have just because there's no control on them. And so it's the same thing. It was uh, farmers getting backhoes and excavators and dozers and just working together to try to stop the water. Matt Watkins is president of the Tulare County Farm Bureau, so he knows firsthand the water troubles Tulare is currently dealing with. Plus, he has his own house and fields in the county. Currently, we're in good shape. When we did have the initial flooding on the east side, um, we did have to do some sandbagging of some neighbor houses and things like that because of just the creeks decided to go in new spots and then they would hit ditches that didn't know they were going to have full of water and so you know it kind of was a, a crazy week and a half two weeks of of uh not knowing oh well i came home and why is there water around the house um obviously now um since that happened about a month ago where there's a little more uh work being done from all the federal state local agencies to help the communities help the farmers and um you know, be part of the solution. But um, there was so much destruction right to start off that, you know, it, it just was on individual farmers and landowners to kind of like pick things up and make sure that things were uh, put back together the best they could to just continue and protect uh, communities and houses. At first, things were hectic. As the rain just kept on falling and the issues kept on piling up, it was less about the future and more about just making it past the storm. I mean, we've lost you know, so many bridges, um, crossings of all these creeks and rivers throughout the county that, you know, it was just basically put a Band-Aid and try to keep people alive, you know, to start off with. Um, you know, since then, I do think there's been a better uh, involvement from all the local and state agencies. I would just say, I think there is some uncertainty about whose job it is to, you know, uh, construct and maintain all every single levy in the, you know in a county that's not used to flooding and because um, we've seen some of that um, you know like there was a creek on one of the properties I farm and basically they breached and uh, you know I called the county the day after and it was like am I supposed to fix this I'm not really sure you know and it was at the time you know everyone was running around with their basically their heads cut off so uh, they're like, yeah, go ahead, you know. But some of that stuff involves fish and wildlife, and there, you know, the concerns, you know, to do, and to do it correctly, you know, I don't want to be liable for trying to fix something that we're not an expert on. So I think there's a lot of that been going on, but it definitely seems to be uh, heading in the right direction with everyone on the same page. Kind of the one positive is, as uh, we've had the flooding and the um, you know, kind of uncertainty. Basically, it's been neighbors and farmers just helping each other. Um, and, you know, Farm Bureau's helped kind of put names of people willing to help together. But really, it's just came to, okay, I heard that so-and-so's dairy's flooded. You know, where's he going? Can someone help? But now that the rains have largely stopped and we enter into the drier and warmer spring months, the focus turns from valley rain to Sierra snowpack. In the southern Sierra snowpack was more than three times the average at its peak. That water will inevitably melt out as things warm up. We are concerned, um, but we'll just have to see. Since the rains have stopped over the last week and a half, two weeks, we have been able to 
lower the reservoir uh, significantly so that there is a, quite a bit of buffer now. Um, that actually even allowed on the Thule River that this week the uh, releases from success were lowered to 500 CFS. And, um, and that was basically they gave everyone a week to do work on levees and repairs and um, kind of try to put the water back where it needs to go and fix things. So, um, so you know, that was nice that we're able to do that. So, so we've gotten, and it's been relatively cold, you know, over the uh, last week. So we're okay right now. And I think a lot, yeah, it just depends on the upcoming weather. We know it's going to get hot. Um, but I just, my personal thoughts are there's so much snow in the Southern Sierra that it's going to have to take something pretty crazy with some record early heat, I think, to cause significant flooding that are kind of uncontrollable. But it you've got so much ice out there, and it's rock-hard ice that I'm just, you know, kind of crossing our fingers, but hoping that, yeah, it's a slow melt. We control it. We utilize it the most we can. And, you know, it becomes a, you know, opportunity to replenish all of our groundwater and it really turns into a positive. But in order to turn this into a positive, it's an all hands on deck situation to manage the water that is already in the Tulare Basin and to anticipate the additional that's coming. All the while, farmlands that grow food for the state and the country have to figure out a path forward. Uh, farming companies are doing the best they can to manage, you know, the floodwaters, but also planning to still farm. I mean, we are producing food that people eat. And, you know, as we've seen in with the drought last year and potential flooding this year, when we don't farm and can't produce as much food, the cost of food goes up, which is one of the issues with inflation. And so, um, you know, we are always optimistic that we're, we're going to have the right weather and the right uh, you know, growing conditions. And so you, you go ahead with it. You go ahead with it and you cross your fingers, you're gonna have be able to make a crop. Even the J.G. Boswell Company, which sits in perhaps the most flood prone area of the old Tulare Lake, has a role to play. Despite some of the stories lately, Matt says they've been good neighbors, keeping with the theme that has developed down there. That's uh, west of Tulare County, but it's uh, in Kings County and the Board of Supervisors has told Boswell to breach some levees and do some things that are required. Um, but again, they're a large farming company that's dealt with this in the past, but it's been 40 years since they've dealt with it. So there's definitely new people running the show and learning as they go and um, trying to figure out the best way to continue farming, but also to keep, you know, uh, control of all this water. And so um, they have not um done anything to hurt any communities uh for sure and have uh, uh you know done their best to help the communities with the uh, amount of water that's flowing near um but um yeah i mean there it's a there are farmlands in the tulare lake basin so they're gonna be the forefront of concerns and issues throughout the whole summer. Ultimately, how the situation in Tulare and surrounding counties unfolds is, more than anything else, down to the weather. I think, you know, again, if we, if the snow melt comes down slow enough and we can control the water, I think in Tulare County, um, it should be okay. I mean, it, it, you know, we should be able to keep, try to keep most of the water in our levees, try to control it, try to use it as much as we can. Um, but still, there's going to be a significant amount of water that ends up in the Tulare Lake. There's just no way uh, to to utilize this amount of water when, you know, a normal snowpack water year is 2 million acre feet, and we're over 7 million acre feet. Um, there's just there's no way to do it. So that, I mean, you're going to have a lake out there. And how long that lake lasts, who knows? Could be a year, could be two years, but um, there's, you know, anticipation that we'll have, um, you know, a new lake in California for a couple of years. You're going to have, you know, tens of thousands of acres of farmland that's flooded. Um, you're going to have some infrastructure 
that goes along that but there's not major you know communities or anything built at the bottom the lowest point of the valley which is where the lake forms um but on the outskirts of it there is you know there's um areas that were not in flood plains you know prone to flooding that with uh drought and different changes are potentially now or there could be just so much water it's bigger than uh, we've ever seen on the uh, lakeside. Going forward, it's important we realize that the effects of a changing climate go beyond drought. Longer and more extreme droughts is just one side of the hydroclimate coin. The other is what we saw this winter, extremely wet periods. We went from three years worth of extreme drought to this in just one winter. And in you know three months, we see that California does have enough water to do everything we need to do. And so um, continue to invest in water infrastructure, if it's storage, uh, storage in the ground, and um, flood protection is critical to the state and business in the state, including agriculture. And so hopefully we can get everyone behind investing in that. And because um, I know the public's been behind investing in water infrastructure in the past the bonds, We've just had a state that has been very, very slow to act. And uh, now between drought and flooding, we're really hoping we can get everyone on board to uh, continue investing in the state and making it the best it can be.